Okay, now here's another thing I wanted to show you. This is from, um, let's see, this was from Homegrown Power, uh, some sort of forum I was visiting. Now, they had a lot of information on alternator design for wind power systems. And that's where you get real low friction, low RPM type systems. And the ceiling fan conversion was something I was interested in. Now, these guys were doing ceiling magnet, permanent magnet alternator conversions of the ceiling fan motors I just showed you on that, that mock-up. And they're able to get 200 watts at a few hundred RPM, I think about the 300 to 600 RPM in, in gusty winds. So, you know, that, that system I was showing you that's pretty weak was only about 1,200 RPM. And, you know, you might be able to get a little bit more than 200 watts out of that unit if you were, even if you were to use that metal. And, you know, just go ahead and use a ceiling fan if you wanted to and run in these permanent magnets underneath it while you're spinning it from the outside with really good Bedini coils. And then uh, you can have the 200 water right there. And uh, you can do much better. Um, they're about 54 volts per coil. And um, there's a little bit more. I'll show you a little bit more in a second. OK, now one of the other things that I wanted to talk about with the wind that you'll find in wind power motors is they don't like cogging. And now cogging occurs especially when you start tightening up the tolerances for the magnets. Um, so that you have a real close spacing. Uh, they don't like that in, in wind power uh, too much because they need to get the, the rotor shaft spinning. And then, I mean, the rotor, they want spinning in the wind with very little very little force of wind. You need to get that, that alternator rotating. And so cogging is something that you try to eliminate in the alternator design for a wind uh, mill. But it's not too essential. I mean, it's not it's not a big a deal when you're running at high RPM. So once you get past that initial clogging of the magnets, you'll be okay. And then in our case, where you're trying to extract a lot of power out of these units, you want to run close to the magnet. So tight, tighten up the tolerance. Excuse me, tighten up the dimensions. Okay, now here's a very important page that I want to show you on the Axisys generator. This is the uh, various design possibilities for the 600 kilowatt Axisys generator. Um, now if you look here in figure two on their report, you'll have to look that up. I believe it's a PDF file on the web. Um, you'll see they've got the north-south, north-south configuration on these magnets. You see how the U-core is laid out in there? And what's happening is you're tightening down the flux. So it runs, you know, you have a real tight gap, and you you have no loss of flux to free space. So it's all all confined in that coil. And that's very important to do. Now, what I'm doing is I take it and I'm C-clamping it around the magnet rather than side to side like that, because uh, I don't like this. Uh, I wanted to have my north-south, north-south, you know, rather than north-south on one side. I wanted to have it clamped around so they're all, all in the same direction. And that makes a big difference on these Bedini-type motors. Now, um, your U-cores, this was a, an analysis they did with a gearbox, with direct drive, and then with uh, three stacked rotors. And they find that just direct drive produced the most uh, wattage output for um, the number of cores they put on there. They were using 564 cores. It's a pretty big generator they've got. That's what it takes to get the 600 kilowatts out of it. So this thing's a massive unit. And uh, now here's some other type designs. They have small type, and this one here has a lot more power to it, obviously. But it's uh, you know you can use little ones like that too and do some interesting things. They were also comparing a small magnet layout versus a big one, and you get better performance out of the big one. Um, so. Let's see what else we've got in here. Here's a little bit of uh, some machine layouts they have. Now here's the picture I wanted to show you of the unit. That's, uh, I believe it's about three feet wide. And um, let me focus that a little better for you. That's their assembled unit. That's their 600 kilowatt unit, I believe. Yeah, 600 kilowatts. And uh, just one of their mock-up units. About three feet wide and almost a megawatt. So imagine driving that with a, a self-running motor.
and you can have a self-running motor here, 600 kilowatts. You just need to develop the torque on these type EV gray motors a little bit better. And uh, right there you have the, the basis of the power plant uh, that's much better than nuclear. So self-running electric motors, running uh, access type generators, and that will give you a lot of power in a very condensed space. And um, that's uh, sort of my old type design. So. Okay, now what I wanted to show you here is some magnetic modeling uh, that I was doing for that ceiling fan motor, which is right over there. Um, now that, that is, uh, this was just a, a mock-up design, and it's something that you can build. I can't show you my much better units and much better improved things. I have a whole bunch more uh, design improvements and things, but I'll show you some basics. And this is a point that I wanted to convey to a lot of you, is that, now here's, this is your ceiling fan body, um, and CAD, I'm bringing it a little closer. And what you can see here is your, these are your, your magnets. And this is 2360 gauss off that magnet. Down in here, you're in the 2800. Up here, 2540. The real light uh, areas are where the, the magnetic flux is real intense. The field is very intense going through this core. Um, now, this was originally a rectangular core, but I wanted to machine it. Uh, just into the areas where the magnetic flux is peak. You don't need any of this. You're actually losing any. The more metal you have, the more you're wasting all that energy into the material. So look at it as if it's wasted water flow. Just like electricity, magnetic flux moves, but it's it's a different form of energy. It's just a, another component of the quanta. So um, here, see how it's faded here? You really only need the, the hot spots. You don't want all this faded area. So but when you make your coil to, to match, uh, you know, your core, the question is what size should the core be? Should it be small? Should it be big? Most people will design kind of like this, where they have a core that's about the diameter of the, the magnet. So and that's typically what people play with. And that, that's fine, but it's not very powerful. Now, when you start looking at, at your type of coil designs you can have, I want to show you the, the good page. Uh, now, here's this is an improvement over that same dimension. So you have, you know, back out a little bit. So you have there to here. Now, what you have is much tighter flux when you go through a smaller dimension. See all that wasted flux? Good flux. Wasted flux. Good flux. And so here, now you can start wrapping your coil wires around like that. Um, you want to do it in stages. I'll show you one more uh, design improvement. And so here was, uh, these were to be just cut out of silicon steel, machine stamped. And um, so I had little uh, protrusions that I was going to put on there. Now these are to separate so you can wind your coil is kind of like a Tesla pancake type, or the way Doug Conzen uh, makes a directional winding on his coil. So Tesla pancake like that, and you're starting, you know, you're going over here, one over the other, and then another Tesla pancake section, and another one. But these are just to help in the winding, and the more you can put in there, the better. Uh, over here, I was trying to experiment in uh, lensing that force and seeing if this is the point where your flux is maximum. And so I wanted to see if you could have a uh, zero point action in there by lensing the forces at that point. And actually, in a pentagonal stacking of, of these.